Welcome to Miracles in the Book of Acts with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our topic today is wind, fire, and tongues. The Book of Acts begins with the dramatic story of Jesus completing his earthly ministry and returning to heaven. After appearing to the disciples at least 10 times over a period of 40 days, Jesus invited his friends to the Mount of Olives before returning to heaven. What a moment that was. Jesus promised that soon his followers would be filled with the Spirit of God and empowered to do the same supernatural things that he had done even after he returned to heaven. He said to them, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the age. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. I have traveled to some of the remotest places on earth, and there seen the power of God being released into the lives of people. Luke tells us, when Jesus had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes. I'm sure one of these angels was Gabriel. Gabriel announced the conception and birth of Jesus. I'm sure he announced the return of Jesus as well. The angel said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1 and verse 11. Jesus is coming back. As surely as he came the first time, he will return a second time. This is the message we proclaim to people around the world. On the 10th day, after Jesus returned back to heaven, it was the first day of the most joyous festival in the Jewish calendar. More people traveled internationally to come to Jerusalem for Pentecost than any of the other festivals. Pentecost was the celebration of the first wheat harvest. It was also the celebration of the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. It was about to become the celebration of the Holy Spirit coming to live inside the followers of Jesus and the birthday of the church. That is something worth celebrating. And this brings us to the first miracles in the book of Acts in this program. The miracles we'll study today are supernatural wind, fire, and tongues. Here is what happened. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Who are these people and where are they staying? After Jesus ascended back to heaven, we read, They returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called Olives, and they entered the city, and they went into the upper room where they were staying. Acts chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Gathered in this room were the 11 remaining apostles, other disciples of Jesus, and most, if not all, of his family. We read all these with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120. Acts chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. Luke reports on the morning of Pentecost, as they were together, suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. I release to you a suddenly from heaven. There are over 36 suddenlies in the Bible. It's when God moves without notifying you about what he is going to do and without seeking your permission or approval. 
suddenlies catch us by surprise before we can even try to say no to God. They are God moments that change our lives. Here is what happened. First of all, there was wind. God often uses wind. Wind, of course, is a symbol of the breath of God, the Ruach of the Old Testament that blew and created. And God used wind to protect people. God used wind to scare off enemies. Wind is the symbol of God's presence. And fire, fire that is not consumed is used by God. Of course, we remember Moses who saw a burning bush and was attracted to it. And the Bible says, when Moses turned aside, then God spoke to him through the bush. And God uses suddenlies, unusual moments and occurrences to see if we'll run away or if we will turn to see what God is doing. And the third occurrence on that day that was miraculous is the languages that came, the tongues, the ability to speak in another language. At this moment, we're going to learn about two different types of tongues. We're going to learn about the first one right now. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Tongues was given first as a praise language to God. Everyone in the upper room were followers of Jesus. The 11 disciples spoke in tongues. Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke in tongues. Jesus' siblings praised God in tongues. James and Jude praised God in tongues. And all 120 persons in that upper room began at one time to praise God and declare his goodness and glory in their lives. Tongues is a way of communicating with God without the devil knowing what we are saying. We had an experience not too long ago where a demonized lady came into our meeting and people around her began to speak in tongues to that lady and and the demons inside of her screamed out, stop speaking in a language I don't know. I knew that those demons were being confused. Tongues is a way of praying with other believers whose language you do not know. I've had the blessing of worshiping with people in over 70 countries, and sometimes you're in a room and you're trying to communicate and you can't, and then praise erupts, and people all of a sudden begin speaking to God in their, in their praise language. It's a beautiful thing. Tongues brings unity in a room that is filled with believers. Praising God in tongues broke the fear that the disciples were carrying And they were hiding it in that upper room, and that fear was broken. They came out to let everyone know what God is doing. They headed straight to the temple, and soon a large crowd gathered around them. Luke says, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at the sound of the multitude, they came together, and they were bewildered because Each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. Acts chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Now we are introduced to a second type of tongues. It is the ability to speak a known earthly language for the purpose of witnessing to the greatness of God. It is a miracle to speak a language that you have never studied. And there are plenty of stories of God empowering people to speak a language that they had never studied. But for those who were listening, it was more than just hearing their mother tongue being spoken. Luke puts it this way. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Acts chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Now, one person can only speak one language at a time. And so on this day, there was a fifth miracle. It was the miracle of supernatural hearing. The multitude of people understood one person speaking to them in their own language. So who were these people who were listening Luke tells us there were Parthians, there were Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, 
Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, Arabians, Arabs. We hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 11. So there were people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Gathered that day in Jerusalem were people from Asia, Africa, and Europe who would return home and tell others what they had experienced in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Then Peter got up to preach his first spirit-filled sermon. I'd like to suggest to you that's a sixth miracle right there for the first time. Peter's gotten out of himself, above himself, and into the spirit And now he is speaking, empowered by the Spirit of God flowing out through his mouth, telling us, telling the people what we needed to hear. Peter traced the story of God's plan of salvation from the very beginning to take away the sin of the world. He reminded the people that Prophet Joel had said that everyone who follows Jesus will have the Spirit of God living inside of them. Peter announced that a new day of spiritual equality was coming. Men and women, people of all ages and all social status would be together in the kingdom of God. As Peter continued to preach, the people cried out, What shall we do? And what a good question that is. And here is the answer he gave. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins And you will receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. What is the first word? Repent. I open your eyes to see that Jesus died for your sin. He died a shameful death, but in an honorable way so that you could be forgiven. I invite you to repent of your sin and ask God to forgive you for your sins by accepting that Jesus paid for your sins on the cross. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place on the cross so that I could become a child of God and have the Spirit of God living on the inside of me. If you just prayed with me, message me, and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. We'll help you know more about what that means. Next, you'll need to be baptized. Peter said, be baptized. Now, baptism symbolizes dying with Jesus, being buried with Jesus, and being raised with Jesus back up to life. It's a beautiful picture of what has happened spiritually on the inside of us as we identify with Jesus dying for us on the cross. If you want to be baptized, but don't know anyone who can help you be be baptized, write to me and I will help you experience the blessing of being baptized. Now lift your hands to God and say, Come, Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. Give me a special language to communicate with you just how much I love you. What a wonderful experience. You're going to feel something bubbling up within you right now and Just let those words out and praise to God. There's more good news. Pentecost was not a one-time event. It is for everyone who follows Jesus. This is what Peter said. This promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off and everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself. Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. Holy Spirit is for everyone. Do you hear the Spirit of God calling you? Do you feel drawn to God today in a way that you haven't ever felt it before? That's the Spirit of God calling you to himself, saying to you that what happened on that day is not just history. It is for this day, for this moment, so that you can be empowered by the Spirit of God to do the same things that Jesus did. And we read, those who received the word were baptized And there were added that day about 3,000 souls, Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. This is the seventh miracle. A great spiritual harvest of souls has occurred. And it's not just for the past. 
There are many words that there is a billion soul harvest that is still to come. And I invite you, if you've just received Jesus, you are a part of this great end time harvest, supernatural harvest of men and women coming to follow Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus and you've never been filled with Holy Spirit, say with me, Father, I want to receive all the Holy Spirit that you want for me to receive. Forgive me for being afraid or possibly being embarrassed by Holy Spirit. I give you access to my mind and to my tongue. Say through me whatever you want to say, to whomever you want me to say it. Begin praising God right now, and you'll be amazed at the words that will come out of your mouth. Message me and let me know what God has just done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the miracles of the book of Acts.